My name is Mark Richardson. I'm the lead field application engineer at LD Rate, and the folks at Wittenstein have very kindly given me uh, a copy of a project using their Safe RTOS, which is running on this TMS 570 launchpad. And as the code executes, it's basically just toggling a couple of LEDs at different rates. Now, what I'd like to be able to find out is, as the code executes, how much of the code is actually being executed. Now, first of all, we need to take a look at the project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch Code Composer Studio from within the LDRay build import. So let me go and launch Code Composer Studio, and we'll be able to take a look at the project that Wittenstein have given me. So I just need to wait for this to start. And what I want to be able to do is to basically do a rebuild of this project. So let's go and see there. We can see we've got the safe RTOS. Let's go and do a rebuild. It's important to do a rebuild because LDA is going to listen to what's happening. And that's how we're going to know about all the source files, all the include paths, all the defines inside of this project. So there we can see that's just doing the link. That's now finished. So I can now close this down and come back to the build import and this is now passing what happened and we should be able to see that we have here an executable we have all these source files we have all these include paths and we also have some preprocessor symbols so we have everything we need in order to be able to now go and analyze the project now to save time I've already analyzed the project and I've taken just a subset of the files so first of all, let's take a look, and I could look at the coding uh, compliance, but I'm just interested in the structure of the code. So let's go and take a look at a system call diagram. Well, again, I've already opened that, and here I'm able to look at various different metrics that we can measure on the code, and the most interesting one is probably the cyclic complexity. I can sort, and I can find all these are very, very simple. Let's take a look at the more complicated ones. And let's scroll down and let's start by taking a look at this particular function here. So let's go and view that as a flow diagram. And the flow diagram is going to show us basically the structure of the code. And if we take a look at this code, we can see we have one path, two, three, four, five paths through the code. And that's why it has a cyclomatic complexity of five. This one's got a cyclomatic complexity of six. And if we scroll up, we can see some of these have got higher values. This one has got a value of 28. It's indicating that it's failed, but that's just because I've set the threshold at, at 25. And when I look at this code, it really is not over complex. And maybe I can change the threshold to put it higher than, than 28. Right, what I'd now like to be able to do is to execute the code. And as it executes, I'd like to be able to find out, well, how much of this code have we actually executed? So let's go and perform the what we call the dynamic analysis. So I'm going to go back into TB Vision, and this time what we're going to do is we're going to go and instrument the source code. Well, I think I've already done that. I've already done that. Let's go and perform the build. Then let's go and execute it. And finally, we'll get the dynamic coverage analysis. And if I wanted, I could also do the data coupling. But let's go and start that. So that's now going to go and build. And when it does the build, it's basically going to substitute the original code here with the instrumented code. And we should see the build start any minute. OK, there we can see the build. So quite a few files, just takes a bit of time. And then it's going to execute it on the target. Now, when it executes on the target, I've specified a particular function. And I've said when this function has been executed to 10 times, let's stop and get the data off the target. So I could run this for as long as I wanted. <coughs> but here, I'm just going to run it for a few iterations. And then we'll be able to find out how much of the code has been executed. OK, that's just coming up to the, the link. There we got the link. OK, that's now executing on the target. So connecting to my target, downloading, executing. It should now set a breakpoint on a particular function. And we should see that there. It's just set the breakpoint here on that function. That's now been hit 10 times. So now we're uploading the results from the target. And now we'll be able to find out, well, as we executed that code, how much of the code have we exercised? So many ways to be able to view the coverage. We could go and generate various reports. In this particular case, let's go back to our uh, call di diagram, and we'll simply do a refresh inside there. So just wait for that to complete. 
OK, that's finished. So now let's go back to our call diagram. And this time, let's do a refresh. So I think that's the refresh button. Right, and this time we can put this into a view that shows us the coverage. So there we can see we're measuring statement coverage, branch decision coverage, also off the screen we have MCDC. And let's go and view here the source. OK, we'll put that over on that side. And now let's go and sort. And there we can see we have a lot of functions with no coverage at all. That's very common because when you're providing a, an operating system, you're providing all these possibilities. And obviously, these are not being called. And really, they should be removed from the project. But let's take a look and see where we do have coverage. So here, we're able to see we've got 100% coverage. It's more interesting when we come down to these where we haven't got 100% coverage. Let's take a look at this one here. And let's go and view the uh, flow diagram. So there we can see the flow diagram and we can see very clearly in green the parts of the code we've executed, in red the parts we haven't executed, and in yellow the parts that yes we've executed it but we haven't exited from every path out of that block of code. And we can basically click on any of these functions and we can see very clearly that we haven't executed this particular block here. Well that corresponds to this particular bit of code over here we take a look at this one, this is also red, and there we can see again we haven't executed this particular block of code. Once again, we can go through and we can take a look at any of these functions, and we can see very clearly which what we've executed. Okay, so that was just a, a short video showing how we can measure structural coverage on a project using the SAFE RTOS. If you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to, to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.